Hello and welcome to this beginner's Photoshop tutorial, where we will explore Photoshop tools for the absolute beginner. Hi, I'm Esan. I will be guiding you through this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, and I will do my best to answer all your questions. And if you find this tutorial useful and want to see more, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow so we can bring you more amazing tutorials. Okay, let's get started. Part 1 The toolbar is located to the left of the canvas, and you can display it in one or two columns by clicking the double arrow at the top of the toolbar. Most of the tools have a little triangle denoting that there are variations or similar tools grouped together. When you click the three dots button near the bottom of the tools bar, you will have access to options that allow you to change the order that the tools are positioned or grouped. You can click and drag to move any tool and place it somewhere else. You can also hide some options, for example, the foreground and background buttons. You can restore all the changes you've made to the tools bar by clicking the Restore Defaults button. Click Done to close these options. The Move tool. Starting at the top of the Tools panel, first is the Move tool, and this tool allows you to move anything by first selecting its layer, and then either click and drag the selected item, or use the directional arrow keys to move it up, down, left or right. You can also use the move tool to click and drag the layers to rearrange their positions. If you move the background layer to the top, you will not be able to see anything else unless you reduce the size of the layer or its opacity. The artboard tool. If you click and hold the move tool, you can use the artboard tool, which is grouped with the move tool. An artboard is a special type of layer group that clips the contents of any contained elements to its boundaries. Artboards serve as individual canvases within a document and this could be very handy if you wanted to create multiple variations of a design. For example, I can move this Photoshop document into an artboard and both layers, including the background image and the text, will be inside the artboard. Clicking the plus icon will create a new artboard If you hold Alt or Option and click and drag, you can create a duplicate of the artboard and all the content inside it. If you hold Ctrl or Command and click and drag, you can move an artboard to a different position. And when you select an artboard, you can see and edit its dimensions in the Tool Options bar. You can select the layer of any item in the Layers panel, then click and drag it from one artboard to another. You can see how this can be handy if you wanted to create slightly different copies of any design. Maybe change the text or the colors, etc. You will need to experiment a little to learn how this tool can be useful for your needs. The Marquee Tool the marquee tool allows you to select any size rectangle, square, oval, or circle on your image by clicking and dragging your mouse, and you can then copy and paste your selection using Ctrl or Command plus C to copy and Ctrl or Command plus V to paste your selection. You can also click the layer menu and choose new layer via copy or layer via cut. Photoshop will create a new layer with your selection cut out from your image. To create a perfect square, hold shift while clicking and dragging. To 
To create a perfect circle, select the elliptical marquee tool. Hold down the shift key as you click and drag your mouse to create your selection. You can also use the single row or single column marquee tool to create a one pixel selection horizontally or vertically. The lasso tool the lasso tool works the same way as the marquee tool, but you can use it to create a freehand selection from your image. The polygonal lasso tool allows you to create a freehand selection with the help of anchor points that you can create every time you click until you go back to the starting anchor point to complete the selection. The magnetic lasso tool works by detecting and following the edges of a subject. The longer you spend following the path you want, the more accurate the selection will be. Again, you can use Ctrl or Command plus C to copy and Ctrl or Command plus V to paste your selection into a new layer. The object selection tool. The object selection tool selects an object just by clicking on it. Usually, Photoshop will highlight an object that can be selected as you hover on it. Objects that have many different colors, including gradients and different shades of darkness, may prove to be difficult to select. We will explore a different option to select any object later. The Quick Selection tool works similarly to the Object Selection tool, but we need to click and drag across the object to make the selection. Clicking more areas adds them to the selection and holding the Alt or Option key while clicking and dragging subtracts the areas from the selection. A little patience is needed to get better results. The Magic Wand tool selects a part of your image depending on the color of the part you select. You can then copy and paste your selection or delete it. Two options can affect the selection and these are First, the contiguous checkbox which includes only the selected area if checked or includes the same color in the entire image if unchecked. And second is the tolerance checkbox which affects colors that are very close to the selected color. You can increase or decrease the intensity of the tolerance from 1 to 100 to add closer colors to your selection. Trial and error is required to choose your perfect selection. As usual, with all selections, you can copy and paste them onto a new layer as we've explored previously. The Crop Tool You can use the Crop Tool to crop your image from all four sides to remove any unwanted parts of your image. It would be a good idea to uncheck the Delete Cropped Pixels box so you can change your cropped image if you wanted to later, otherwise, the cropped pixels will be deleted. You can choose from preselected crop sizes or choose your own custom width, height, and image resolution. Remember to press Enter on your keyboard or click the tick icon at the top to lock in your changes. The Perspective Crop tool allows you to change the perspective of any part of your image by tilting the image using a grid. For example, the window in this image looks smaller on the left than the right edge, and we can fix that by using the Perspective Crop tool. You may want to create a duplicate layer to work on, so you will still have the original image. Click and drag across the part you want to modify, and adjust the corners to include the complete object you want to modify. Once you are happy with your selection, press Enter on the keyboard, or click the tick icon to commit to the changes you made. Photoshop does a pretty good job changing the perspective of the selected part. The Slice tool allows you to divide your image into slices. This is usually used for web design, so you can have specific parts of an image for a website. The style can be normal, which is unconstrained, or you can have a specific width and height ratio, for example 4 to 1, which would make the slice 4 times as wide as the height, regardless of its size. And the last option is to have a specific size slice of the image. 
you can input the dimensions for the width and height in the options bar. To create a slice, click and drag around the area you want, and Photoshop will divide the image into several slices, which will be numbered accordingly. To save the slices you created, go to the File menu, Export, and Save for Web. Your image slices will be saved in a folder named Images at the location you choose. The Slice Select tool allows you to select slices that you have already created using the Slice tool. You can move and adjust the size of the slices you have made previously. But you cannot do the same with the auto-generated slices unless you select and promote them by clicking the Promote button. You can also divide slices using the Divide button. And if you select more than one slice, the alignment options become active. And if you right-click on a slice, you have more editing options. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell, so you can be notified when I release the remaining parts. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to see you in the next tutorial.